Hello, dear and beloved science students. It's your favorite sixth grade science teacher, Mr. Heckenlotley, coming to you on Wednesday, April 22nd. Okay, so what I did yesterday was I had a Google Meet with my seventh grade classes, and I'd like to try it tomorrow on Thursday with my sixth grade classes. Now, what you'll just do is you'll go to the Google Classroom, and right at the main page, you'll see there's a link for Google Meet. So what I'm planning to do is uh, for period five, I'll meet with you from 8 to 8.20. Uh, period six, I'll meet from 8.20 to 8.40. Um, there will be no instruction. I just kind of want to check in with you guys, give you the opportunity to talk, uh, see if that can be something that is helpful. Okay, so the assignment that you got on Monday was the Birds of Hubbard Rock, which I really think is a great assignment because it really sets you up to learn about the scientific process. So uh, one of the things that's great about the Birds of Hubbard Rock project is that there was long-term monitoring of bird populations and they were looking for patterns in the data. And with those patterns in the data, that hopefully raises some additional questions. So let's talk about the additional questions which might be raised by the data. So the first two pages of the assignment, notice and wonder from the video that you watched. So that kind of gave you some background. Uh, then hopefully you read, yes, you need to read. I'm sorry, that's what you do in Mr. Heck and Lively's class. You read science. Okay, there's not a lot there. All right. So you read it, you understand they're doing long-term monitoring of these bird populations. Uh, they've got some nice pictures. It's, it's not really necessary that you understand everything about it. Just know that they're, they're really working it in a very systematic way, okay? Then we come to the data, okay? So you've got this data table here. And, you know, I think that this is really good because it shows you um, how graphs can really help you uh, bring information to life. So what you notice in the data table is you notice that very early on there's high numbers of birds in these uh, studies. So for like for the first uh, couple years from 1969 to 1974, the numbers are 158, 163, 212, 214, 192, 161, 201. Okay, so they're, they're seeing a lot of birds in this environment. But uh, uh, then they start having a decline. And the reason I think graphs are really helpful is that it can show you that decline. So you can see how, you know, bird populations seem to really be extremely low uh, several years ago. They've kind of come back up, but they're not back to their historic levels. So... Um, when you get to the questions, what is the independent variable? That would be the years. The dependent variable, the number of birds. Okay. Um, uh, then you're looking for the high, low points and abnormalities. Highs might be something like uh, the most birds at Hubbard Brook was 220 birds. The low, the lowest number of birds is 70. Patterns, I see that the numbers dip drastically and then they rise and hover around the same number. And uh, anomaly, uh, the numbers go from around 160 to 210 birds. Okay, so this was uh, some student work. So I just put it up there. If you wanna freeze that and take a look at it, that would be fine. No problem with that. Uh, there was a mistake, something about the uh, the bold blue gills showed up on this one, so I apologize for that. Um, next question was the importance of long-term data collection. Is it really necessary to collect data for so long? Yeah, because you want to see if there are uh, trends, if um, uh, something new comes into the environment that's either causing a crash in populations or an overpopulation. Uh, next question, could we learn the same information by collecting data for a shorter time span? Well, maybe so, I, you know, you can argue that. Um, uh, number eight, as an exercise, look at the data only five years at a time by covering up portions of the graphs. Uh, would you make the same claims with only five years of data as opposed to 46? 
why or why not? I think that's a really good question to ask. I, I think uh, uh, gathering data over a longer period of time helps you understand the patterns and, and anomalies. Okay, that's about all I have. What I am assign, assigning you is um, uh, the assignment on, carb, uh, on carbon in mangrove soils. Okay, I think that's what it's called. Um, so uh, hopefully you get started with that and hopefully I will see you all tomorrow for our Google Meet. All right, have a good day. Be good to each other during the lockdown.